guys, I'm Kristen. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing five recommendations for your fall reading needs, plus one bonus nonfiction recommendation as well. I've tried to include a little bit of variety with my recommendations so that there's something for everyone, depending on whether or not you're in the mood for more spooky, gory, dark stuff. Uh, dark academia or even just something that is like very environmental and atmospheric. So hopefully I have something for everyone today. I'm also going to be including the first sentence from each book to help pique your interest. So the first book that I will start off with is Wolfskin by Juliette Morillier. This is one of Juliette Morillier's lesser known works, but it is very good still. And it has all of that atmospheric, very environmental, historical folklore elements that Juliette Morillier fans love. And I think would be great also for fans of like Uprooted, Spinning Silver, and Catherine Arden, like the Winter Night Trilogy. The, the book follows the main character, Evand, who wants to grow up to be a wolf skin, which is sort of like a Viking warrior. And he develops an unlikely friendship with a the son of a the younger son of a chieftain named Summerlid. Summerlid is sort of like the brains to Evans Braun, and this unlikely friendship eventually leads them to travel across the ocean to the Orkney Islands with Summerlid's older brother. So that's the initial setup for the book, but really what this book is is just very environmental. It's a little bit more dark and ominous than a lot of Juliet Morillier's other works, especially if you've read some her like the Seven Waters series, Daughter of the Forest. This has a little bit of the Brotherhood vibes, a little bit of a romance, there's a little bit of a questionable circumstances around a death, and a whole lot of folklore atmospheric vibes. This book is available to read on the app Scribd if you have that, but I would definitely check out the content warnings on this one. There is mention of rape scenes. They are not depicted, but there is a, a couple uh, references. So the first sentence in this book is a very short one, doesn't give a whole lot away, but it is Winter Bites Hard in Rogelin. The second recommendation is Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornachek. This is also still in sort of the atmospheric folklore fairy tale vibes, if that is what you're looking for for a fall read. Still also in the Norse track, this book follows Ingboda, who is the first wife of the god Loki. And it follows the lead up to uh, Ragnarok, which was sort of the apocalypse between the Norse gods. It does read a lot like a fairy tale, especially at the beginning of the book where it is third person and there's a little bit of distance between yourself and the characters, but this does kind of grow and change throughout the book as you really get to know Angbora and her situation and everything that's happening in her life. It still is very earthy and woodsy and very heartbreaking and sort of like a quiet fall read. I can see this being perfect on like a dark, kind of chill day towards the later end of fall when you want to sit inside with tea and just like maybe cry a little bit. <laughs> no, just me? <laughs> and the first sentence in this book reads, Long ago when the gods were young and Ausgord was new, there came a witch from the edge of the worlds. Switching the vibe up here, the third recommendation is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This book is quite popular. It was all the rage maybe last year or the year before on booktube. And I believe at the time it was described as <laughs> lesbian necromancers in space, <laughs> which is both true, but not really what this book is about. I personally would describe this book as sort of a spooky fantasy genre bender with very dark humor. It is a little bit fantasy, they are necromancers. It is a little bit sci-fi, they are in space or traveling from one planet to another. But there is also sort of this murder mystery haunted mansion vibe going on as well, where Gideon and uh, her companion Harrow have to go to this like abandoned haunted mansion along with two people from all of the other planets in their empire and prove themselves for in this like magical competition, but things start getting really dark and there is a murder mystery and things are just all over the place. It's very cool. I actually thought this was just like a comedy book. I didn't think it was dark and I think I like turned the page 
and things went to a very different place. I personally have Harrow the Ninth, the second book on this sequel, on my radar for the fall as well. I can't wait to get back to this series. This book is available on Scribd, but only in the audiobook format. I haven't listened to it, but I have heard really good things from others who have that the audiobook is really great. So I will now read the first sentence in the book, which I think kind of gives a little bit of the complicated, kind of funny, strange vibes of this book. In the myriad year of our Lord, the 10,000th year of the King Undying, the kindly Prince of Death, Gideon Nav, packed her sword, her shoes, and her dirty magazines, and she escaped from the House of the Ninth. Okay, next we are going into the Dark Academia vibes with A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This book has had a lot of controversy on it. I am also filming a video on whether or not you should or shouldn't read A Deadly Education, so if this piques your interest, maybe also check out that video as well when I release it to get a better sense, a more in-depth sense of what this book is like. But this book is set in a magical school where the school has, like, things within the school have kind of gone wrong, and it is a little bit sentient and actively trying to kill the students. And you are learning everything about the world and the school and the students through Elle's eyes in a series of anecdotes uh, that do come a little bit across as sort of, um, info dumping or like exposition, but it's just like her style of storytelling is Elle telling you, the reader, these little anecdotes about the world and the school, and that's how you're learning the setting. It does have a slower plot, and it is very like high school teen angst not fitting in vibes, while at the same time in this like very dark kids are dying all around them, evil school with monsters kind of a setting. Elle is destined to become this evil, very, very powerful sorceress, but she doesn't want to be evil and is actively trying to avoid that. And Orion is sort of like the golden hero boy of the school, and they kind of begrudgingly develop a friendship. The first sentence in this book I think is hilarious and definitely caught my eye when I read it. It goes, I decided that Orion needed to die after the second time he saved my life. But definitely check out my other video. I will go a lot more into depth about why people might not like this book and how it is really, really different from a lot of Naomi Novik's other works. But I think it is like a really fun, kind of humorous and angsty version of that dark academia where it's not quite as serious as what you would maybe think of as dark academia, but definitely fits into that world. The fifth but not final book recommendation here, we're going into classic sci-fi and as well sort of like horror mystery a little bit, and that is the book The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells. I would definitely categorize this book as classic sci-fi meets horror. It is really dark, it is really gory, it's very animalistic. The setup for this story is one where it's like, oh, this was a manuscript that was found, and it relates the story of the main character, Edward Prendick, and he was stranded on an island in the Pacific that is being used by a scientist, Dr. Moreau, to do some pretty dark, horrifying experiments involving animals. I would definitely check out the content warnings for this one, especially relating to animals. It is a little bit gory and some of the scenes are a little quite uncomfortable, and it is very confronting in its exploration of the themes that it's exploring here. When it was originally published in its time, it was exploring ideas about creation and divinity, but you can almost more read it currently as an exploration of medical ethics, morality, and genetic engineering. The first sentence in this one doesn't give it a lot of weight because it's setting up the, the fact that the manuscript was found, but I will read it anyway. On February the 1st, 1887, the Lady Vane was lost by collision with a derelict when about the latitude 1 degree south and longitude 107 degrees west. <laughs> so riveting. And then finally, I have one bonus recommendation here, and that is a nonfiction book. If you have watched my videos before, you might have noticed I do not really read nonfiction books, with the sole exception of this book. It's called The Upside of Stress by Kelly McGonigal. Kelly McGonigal is my research girl crush. 
Like, I wish I could both be best friends with her slash be her or work in her lab. That would be so amazing. She is also the speaker that did my all time favorite TED talk ever. I will link it down below that confronts our idea and perception about the fact that stress is bad. Because September and back to school season can be a, a lot for a lot of different people, whether or not you are going back to school yourself or you have kids that are going back to school or maybe you are a teacher going back to school. So if stress is something that you are hyper aware of this going into this fall, maybe check out this book. It breaks down not just the science of stress, but how we have more control over how we respond to stress than we think that we do. But this book goes into sort of our current understanding of stress and stress research, but also how stress research is not as cut and dry as we are perceiving through media and how in fact our mindset and your body's mindset can actually change the physiological cascade of hormones that happens in your body in stressful situations. I will read a slightly longer quote from this one to give you a little bit of a sense of what this book is like. If you had to sum up how you feel about stress, which statement would be more accurate? A, stress is harmful and should be avoided, reduced and managed, or B, stress is helpful and should be accepted, utilized and embraced. Five years ago, I would have chosen A without a moment's hesitation. This book is awesome. I love the research on mindset. I love the research on stress. I want to embrace more of this in my own life. And I think this book is amazing. Do you have any go-to fall recommendations? If so, let me know down below. I'd love to hear them. Also, if you've read any of these books, I'd love to hear what you thought. That is it for me today. Have a great day, everyone. See you next time. Bye.